Good afternoon. Today is Valentine's Day, the day when we celebrate love. The problem is we don't really seem to know what love means. Imagine the scene. You're in elementary school, learning your multiplication tables. Someone gets in front of your class and says, three times one equals three, three times two equals six, three times three equals nine, and so on. Well, so far so good. But then another person gets in front of your class and says, three times one equals four, three times two equals seven, three times three equals 15. That's a completely different message. So who is your real teacher? Which answers are correct? This is our problem when we're trying to learn about love. We're surrounded by false teachers who instruct us about love in the wrong way. Let's take, for example, Hollywood and Madison Avenue. Hollywood produces movies and TV shows in which we see beautiful people fall in love with each other and live happily ever after. The problem is that life is more complicated than a two-hour movie. And real people don't have the chance to be touched up with airbrushes. And then there's Madison Avenue, the advertisers who sell us products and tell us that if we buy them, then people will love us. If you buy the right dandruff shampoo, you'll score on your ski trip. Wear the right perfume, and men will chase you through town to give you flowers. We know it's ridiculous, but it's easy to get sucked into it. Valentine's Day itself adds to the confusion of what real love is. The mascot of today is Cupid, that cute little angel who shoots arrows of love into people's hearts. But that's not who Cupid really is. Cupid, the mythological figure, did shoot arrows, but his arrows filled their victims with uncontrollable desire. That's where we get our word cupidity from. Cupidity means greed for money and possessions. False teachers tell us that love is the same thing as desire. Love means wanting someone or wanting something for yourself. Love means getting something you want. But that is the exact polar opposite of what love really means. I stayed at a hotel recently, and their corporate slogan was surprisingly close to an accurate description of love. Their slogan was, Making you happy makes us happy. Making you happy makes us happy. Well, that'd be pretty remarkable if it was actually true, wouldn't it? That a hotel chain's top priority is to make us happy. That that's more important to them than making a profit. It's more important to them than the well-being of their workers or their market share or whatever else corporations tend to go after. But that is love. Finding pleasure in putting the welfare of someone else ahead of your own. It's the satisfaction, the joy, or purpose in benefiting someone else instead of promoting yourself. And Jesus is the perfect model or example of love. He's certainly far better than Cupid. As 1 John chapter 4 tells us, this is the definition of love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God loved us, even when we were turning our back against him, even when we ignored him or were indifferent to him or rebelled against him. Love meant that God sent his son for us, even, then that's, even when that was the way we were treating him. He loved us by sending his son so that through his death and resurrection, we may be set free from sin and the way is open for us to eternal life. But love is more than just putting others ahead of yourself. You could do that out of a sense of duty or obligation. As the hotel chain puts it, making you happy makes us happy. Love means that you're happy to put others ahead of yourself. And once again, Jesus is that example for us. Hebrews 12 tells us, that for the joy set before him, 
Jesus endured the cross. He went to the cross filled with joy. And Isaiah chapter 53 tells us that after he has suffered, he will see the light of light and be satisfied. Jesus went to the cross because he wanted to, not because it was his duty. He didn't go grudgingly, wishing that he could have focused all that energy and effort on himself. No, he went because he knew that blessing us was what would make him happy. So, today, on Valentine's Day, you have a decision. What kind of love will you live? Which example of love will you follow? Will you follow Cupid and believe that love means chasing after your desires? Or will you follow Jesus Christ and realize that love means making other people happy is the true path to happiness for yourself? Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we are grateful that you have set for us the example and the definition of love. So open our hearts, Lord. Help us to recognize the joy that comes, not from seeking what is best for ourselves, but the joy that comes from benefiting others. And in this way, may we follow the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.